Right, this is part three on a multi-part video series on acids and bases. You can find the rest of these um, acid-base videos on my YouTube video series, Chemistry Talks with Dr. T. The goal today, though, really is just um, we're going to look at different materials, and if I was to drop that material in water, would it make the water strongly acidic? strongly basic, weakly acidic, or weakly basic. And this is a very uh, qualitative uh, thing. As we've learned earlier, you can actually quantitatively figure this out exactly using the Ka, and we'll dive into that more in future videos. But today the idea is to take a lineup of different materials and determine whether they're strong acid, strong base, weak acid, or weak base. So before we do that, let's, let's kind of get some ground rules, and this is a very uh, complicated procedure but but you need to be able to think about different materials uh, if they're salts break them apart and think about the cation and anion separately um, if they're acids or bases to figure out whether they're strong acids or, or uh, weak acids or strong bases or weak bases so let's start with the acidic side of things okay the binary acids are basically acids or protons bound to chlorine through iodine. So I'm going to mark that out on the periodic table and remind myself that if it's an acid attached to that, it's a strong acid. If it's that anion by itself, it's actually a neutral um, salt. We'll talk about that here in a second. But as we talked about in the last videos, most oxoacids or acids made with polyatomic ions, they're really bound through oxygen. So nitric acid, phosphoric, sulfuric acid, many of these things. So now the question is, how do I know whether those are strong or weak acids? We learned in the last videos that as you increase the number of oxygens, that it increases the acidity. It, so really it's a relationship by the number of, of hydrogens to the number of oxygens. And, and here's kind of a way to remember it. If you'll take the number of hydrogens in the general um, oxoacid structure, you add one to it, and if that's less than the number of oxygens, then you can assume that it's a strong acid. So for example, if I took nitric acid, I add one to the number of hydrogens, that would give me two. That's less than the three oxygens, so this is a strong acid. That's your good rule of thumb. Weak acids, when it comes to the oxo acid, you use the same rule, add one to it. If it's greater than or equal to the number of oxygens, then it's a weak acid. For example, here's phosphoric acid. It's got four, uh, three protons. You add one to it, that makes four. That's exactly equal to the number of oxygens, so that's considered a weak acid. Ammonium, as we learned in the last video. Nitrogen with four bonds to uh, something is actually considered uh, a weak acid. And then when you have a, a binary acid to anything besides basically that chlorine through iodine group, you can consider it a weak acid. And then the other groups to keep in mind are um, metals with, that are highly charged and small, as we showed you in the last video. Those also are able to um, start to uh, remove hydroxides off water and leave protons behind, in essence. So, for example, Al3+, plus, and any of these uh, transition metals, when they are highly charged, uh, uh, 2 plus or 3 plus, they're acidic. And consequently, the metals that are over in this group are, are usually considered neutral, especially if they're in group 1. Hydrogen cyanide, or prussic acid, is a weak acid. And here's an exception to the H plus uh, 1 rule, and that is if you take boric acid, even though the H plus 1 would give you 2, which is less than 3 oxygens, in the case of this being boron, that changes how the electrons are pooled, because boron has so little electronegativity, that it also is a weak acid, which is why we can use it to clean our eyes. A lot of times boric acid is used in eye drop solutions. All right, now to the hydroxide end, to the basic end. Obviously, if you have a very soluble hydroxide, it's going to be a strong base. Well, where are the soluble hydroxides? And I'm just going to mark them out on the periodic table here. Anything in group 1. And then this little grouping, calcium on down, these are also soluble. 
These up here are slightly soluble hydroxides, are as all of these, these are insoluble hydroxides, or you may even consider them now that you understand equilibrium that they're, they have uh, KSPs that are less than one, very low. Okay, so those are considered weak bases, but consequently these cations by themselves are considered neutral cations. These cations by themselves are neutral. If they're bound to hydroxide, then that makes it uh, strongly basic. These anions are considered neutral, but if they're bound to a hydrogen, that makes it strongly acidic. Weak base, insoluble hydroxide, everything except what I've shown you here. Amines, nitrogen's bound to three th things. Nitrogen with three bonds are considered basic. Conjugate bases of weak acids. So now we've defined our weak acid, so now we know the conjugate base of the weak acid. In other words, when I have um, hydrogen cyanide and it loses its proton, the cyanide ion is considered basic. The borate ion is considered basic. Ammonia, basic. The phosphate ion, that's considered a weak base. Okay, neutral salts, once again, as I discussed, these particular group one and two cations alone are considered neutral and chlorine through iodine those are considered neutral the conjugate bases of strong monoprotic acids so if you take nitric acid and deprotonate it resulting in the nitrate ion which is considered neutral as are as I discussed earlier chloride bromide and iodide print out this sheet you can use it to study, but let's let's go over to the lineup and see if we can pick these out. And if we can pick those out and we can study and use the sheet, that's going to help us better than anything to, to learn how to identify these things. What you might want to do is set up a table like this. Let's, let's set up where we have a strong acid area, a strong base area, a weak acid, a weak base area, and a neutral area. And then let's pull these salts down into the proper um, category. All right? So you might want to stop your video, get your sheet set up, and then let's, let's practice and use the sheet that we did right here in the previous slide. We're going to use it to guide us. So once you're done, you got your sheet all set up, your matrix set up, let's practice. All right, first element. You learned in the last video, this particular motif right here where you have a C double bond O in brackets and an OH, that is actually the signal that you have a, uh, a organic acid and all the organic acids are weak acids. Here's nitrogen bound to three things, it has three bonds on it, so that's a weak base. Now we need to break this into two parts. The first part is the potassium ion, which alone is actually neutral, but then you take this, this is the acetate ion, that is the conjugate base of a weak acid. In fact, here is the weak acid that it is. The, this is the conjugate base of the weak acid, which is a weak base. So together, that is a weakly basic salt. Potassium contributes nothing to that. Here's the same thing. Breaks sodium apart. That's group one. That's neutral. Chloride apart. That is the group seven grouping that is actually neutral. So Overall, this salt is neutral, would not change the pH of water. Okay, this is a similar thing. You gotta break the iron apart. Well, that iron is a plus three, and it's in the transition group, so that's slightly acidic. The chloride ions are in that grouping that's neutral, so overall, this salt would be weakly acidic. Here's sodium hydroxide. Sodium alone is neutral, but hydroxides, this makes it very soluble hydroxide, so that's going to be a strong base. Nickel, once again, it fits in that category of being weakly um, acidic, but you're putting it with a, a, a base, so now you have both uh, figuring in. So now here's where, here's what you have to do when you have uh, a, a weakly acidic and a weakly basic component, although in this case this is strongly basic. What you do is you compare the pKa's. So the pKa of the nickel aqueous ion and you compare it to the pKb of the hydroxide, well obviously the pKb of the hydroxide is very strong, so consequently that overrides that. 
and so you can literally if you can see it like here qualitatively but otherwise you would actually have to get the numbers to make this decision in this case this is uh, qualitatively a hydroxide is a very strong base so that goes over to the category of weak base it goes there or another way of remembering this is you can say hey this is a insoluble hydroxide so it's going to be a weak base here's ammonium there's nitrogen bound to four things that's weakly acidic bromine is in that grouping that's neutral so it's a weak acid all right so here's where we use our H plus one rule hydrogen is uh, plus one is going to give me two and that's less than the number of oxygen so that's considered a strong acid potassium that's that group one cation with the group seven anions in the in the neutral form so this is an all neutral salt okay looks like a lot of shrubbery but here's your clue remember this all blocked off by itself co2 that's uh, a signal that you're getting a carbonyl group bound to a hydrogen that's a organic acid that's a weak acid there's nitrogen bound to one two three methyl groups that's nitrogen to three things that's weakly basic okay here we go the H plus one rule that would give me four protons or four and four is equal to the number of oxygens that's a weak acid there you go oh look at this one is interesting sodium by itself is neutral but here's H2PO4 now this you you might want to use the uh, H plus one rule but that doesn't apply because this is actually an anion so you might want to think about where this sits that actually you could lose a proton and that would act as an acid or you could gain a proton back and that would act like a base but if you look at the numbers the K2 and the KB remember what you can do if you if you're trying to find a KB for something like this take uh, 1 times 10 to the 14th and divide that by the K1 and you'll end up with the KB K treating this as if it's a base going backwards and if you'll look at these two numbers the acidity is stronger than the basicity so in this case this is a weak acid okay I'm gonna mark this red to remind you that this is not a qualitative thing that you could do easily uh, you need to look at the K1 and K2. So we've had two of those, although this one, um, the nickel, is a little different because you can qualitatively say, well, I know the KB of a hydroxide, so that's, that's a little different. Okay, here's another example. You could imagine that this uh, hydrogen phosphate could lose a proton and become the phosphate anion, or it could go the other direction and gain back a proton and become the uh, dihydrogen phosphate anion acting like a base in that case and if you look at the um, Ka for going to the right for the equilibrium going to the right you can see that's 4.2 times 10 to the minus 13 but you look for the Kb going back to the left and it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 7 so the Kb is actually will drive this reaction to the left more than it will drive to the right so consequently we would consider this um, the hydrogen phosphate anion as a weak base and once again that's going to turn red so that we remember that it, you'd have to do this where you look at the Ka and Kb to understand it remember again look back on the last slide if you can't remember how to take a Ka and turn it into a Kb so we go to our last material this is the um, sodium phosphate material and it only has one way to go this in essence is the conjugate base of the weak acid and so that's kinda how you can look at that so I hope these practice slides will help you a lot and you're gonna wanna run through those quite a few times and look at other practice problems in your homework um, and I hope you'll learn uh, how to qualitatively pick out whether something's a strong acid, strong base, weak acid or weak base in a solution